Today in the shop, we have a Mark 7 GTI with the most common Mark 7 problem a leaking water pump. Overall, the Mark 7 is an awesome car, and there's not a ton of really common failures. The water pump, however, is the one that is the most common. And it's not just on the GTI, this is pretty much every VW and Audi with a two liter turbo from about 2009 till current. The actual parts we're going to be replacing are going to be the thermostat housing, the water pump itself, plastic union with seals, the counter threaded bolt, the drive belt for the water pump, a new intake manifold gasket. Of course, we have our coolant. This is all a water pump replacement kit that I got from shopdap.com. We're using a 2015 GTI for this video. The repair process we're gonna use is gonna be really similar across the board whether you have an A4 or whether you have an Atlas that you're doing this job on it's going to be pretty close just make sure you follow the repair manual for your exact car because there may be some small differences our water pump lives at the front of our engine underneath the intake manifold we're going to start by getting this air duct out of the way to do this job properly you are going to need a good amount of tools most of them are basic hand tools that you probably already have but there's a few specialty items that you really do need a coolant filling funnel Funnel, a crankshaft holder if you're replacing the belt, a scan tool to activate the thermostat, and for the basic tools, a series of picks, a gasket scraper, a 17 millimeter wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench, if you're replacing the belt, a 12 millimeter wrench, a pair of hose clamp pliers, a T25 Torx, a T30 Torx, I like both of those in quarter inch drive, a longer extension, a ratchet, a number 10 triple square, a seven millimeter socket or driver, a flat blade screwdriver, and a torque wrench that goes down to nine Newton meters. It's also a good idea to have a handful of pig mats to catch the dribble that doesn't make it into your bucket. For the duct, you have a couple of screws. Also be careful of this coolant line. Right behind where the screw was, there's a little tab. You need to kind of lift up on the core support or push down on the duct to pop it out of the way. Then we'll go ahead and take off our secondary air tube. I like to take the whole intake off. Then to remove the air box, you might need a little bit of silicone spray. This one feels like it's really on there. There we go. There's three grommets that hold that in. Sometimes they get fussy. There's the third one. Careful of this tube. You don't want to break it. And our duct. That opens up a whole bunch of room. Next up, we have a bunch of stuff to kind of undo on our intake manifold. We have this fuel line to undo, map sensor connector, just tuck that out of the way. We have two T30s holding this plastic coolant line on. A little tip if you're worried about organization, making sure screws get put back in the right spot, you can always just run these, kind of set them in there if you want like that. We can disconnect our throttle body, get that connector out of the way. I'm also gonna undo this this coolant hose right here. Probably won't get a ton of coolant out of this right at this point in time. I say that, watch, it's gonna make a giant mess. Giant mess. Next up, let's drain our coolant. I like to undo the lower radiator hose on the passenger side, spray it with some silicone, undo the clip. Just try not to do what I did and yeet the whole clip out. And then you're just gonna slowly work that fitting off of there. Just be careful, you don't wanna bust your radiator or anything like that. Before you take this off, make sure you put something under your car to catch this coolant. This is about to make a mess. You don't wanna dump it all over your floor. See that, look at that. Look at all that coolant gushing out. That coolant looks like it probably was mixed. Now that our coolant is drained or draining, we can get this upper pipe off. With the coolant line out of the way, we can move our fuel line up here and I'm just gonna zip tie it up here so that it doesn't interfere with what we're trying to do. I'm also gonna undo this coolant hose, moving right along Along, we have a bunch of stuff to undo, like the clamp for the throttle body. This car has right about 100,000 miles on it, and I'm guessing a lot of this stuff has probably never been off before, because this clamp is just coming apart. If it comes apart, we'll put another one on. Keep in mind, you might still get some coolant out of these hoses when you take them off, so be real careful. One of these coolant hose picks is game changer for these hoses that are stuck on here like that. And just be real careful you don't punch a hole right through the hose. We have a couple connectors we're gonna undo here, and then there's a little one right back here. Don't forget this one. There's also a grommet way down here. So if you follow this bit of the harness down to the water pump, there's a retainer grommet. You take that off, you get a whole bunch more room. Let's get underneath this thing and get some stuff from the bottom side now. Ooh, that coolant's nasty.
and disconnect the pressure sensor right here. This is right in the boost pipe. We're gonna undo the clamp where it goes into the charge cooler. You probably could get away with not doing this, but it's such an easy thing to do and it opens up so much more space. Before you take this hose off, bear in mind there might be oil that comes out of it. And finally, we have a T30 in the boost pipe. There's actually two of them, one in this pipe and one in the pipe we're about to remove. That T30 is also captive. Now you might be able to get this off of here from the bottom, you might have to go back up top and undo it off the throttle body, but ours came off pretty easy. That was yucky. That exposes our nasty coolant leak. Yuck. Look at that. Before we come back down, I'm gonna do a couple of things down here. I'm gonna take the bolt out of the bracket that holds the intake manifold on at the bottom. You don't need to take this all the way out. I just like to crack it loose because it's gonna be easier to get this tool on here from the bottom than up top. We also have this connector right here, this all crusted up one. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this now as well. There is a lock on it. So you gotta pull this gray piece down before you can push it in. And that, if yours is crusty, might be hard. Yeah, the pins look good, so we're fine there. Just remember, this is a gray lock that you have to push before you can undo the connection. Now that we're back up top, I'm gonna undo the fuel line, take a rag or something and put it underneath so that the fuel dribbles get caught in the rag. Also be careful, you might have a little bit of residual fuel pressure in here. That fitting has to come all the way off. Next, we're gonna take the manifold off. If you decide that you don't wanna take the manifold off, you can do this job without. I don't like doing it without, especially on these newer ones, and I'll show you why in a second. But if you take the throttle body off, that will give you enough room to get the water pump and the thermostat housing out. Let's undo these bolts that hold the manifold onto the cylinder head. They're all T30s except the top outer ones. Those are 10 mils. You can go right through these little chambers to get your 30s out. Typically I undo them all and then I'll go back with a magnet and pull them out. Now on the passenger side near where the oil filter is, you have a connector. You wanna undo that because the T30 at the bottom on this side is kind of hidden. That reveals our T30. It's legit directly under that sensor. Then switch to your lost 10 millimeter and undo the upper outer nuts. These sometimes like to go rogue, so I usually try and get a magnet. Next, we're gonna undo the 13 millimeter nut that is at the bottom bracket. This is the other side of that triple square that we loosened up when we had the car off the ground. The bracket on this engine is much easier than like the old CCTAs that were kind of a nightmare. Now we should be able to get our manifold off. There is one more bolt you have to take off and it's a T30 that holds the fuel rail to the manifold. You'll never guess where that went, right in the coolant. We also need to undo the other side of the fuel rail. You probably won't really get any fuel out of this side, but maybe a dribble or two. This side's a bit more challenging. You may need to lift up on the manifold a tiny bit to get it out and then just loosen it the rest of the way with your finger. See, I'm getting a little fuel, but there was no pressure behind it. And what I think is the final step is we need to get our vacuum line undone. It goes underneath the manifold. So usually undoing this up here is a little bit easier. This is also uh, some what reasonable place to have a vacuum line break. So just be careful. That should be everything. We're gonna carefully remove our manifold. Always go slow with this kind of stuff in case you did forget something. The reason I like taking this manifold off even more than the CCTA, check it out. Our fuel rail stays behind so we don't have to worry one lick about fuel injector seals or anything. Now it is time to remove our water pump, but I have a piece of advice before you take out the old pump. Any cleaning you're gonna do up here, do it first, then we're gonna take the pump out. Normally what I do is I just wipe these off, and try real hard not to get anything into the cylinders. You can even take these little plates out, stuff a rag in there and do that while you clean it. Now we're gonna start removing our coolant hoses that are still attached to our pump. Do this one on the top first. Ah oh, man, these clips are just happily coming off here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back on right away. Oh gosh, maybe. Oh my gosh. Who taught him how to do this? There we go. Now we got one right below that with our pick. Hopefully, hey, our clip stayed on. More coolant, oh, right into the light too. 
And we got one more all the way down at the bottom. By the way, it's not a big deal if they come off. I just worry they're gonna get lost. Next, we're gonna take off this cover that covers up our drive belt for a water pump. Be careful, you don't wanna drop these because they're gonna go right into your drink bucket. There's two bolts that hold the cover on, one here at the top. The other one is pretty far down here and it's kind of hard to see. There we go. We can take our cover off. That slides up and out and exposes our little drive belt for our water pump. A lot of times you can just roll this belt right off. Just be real careful. You don't want to like kink it or anything. It says it right on there, do not crimp. And be careful these little blades on the end of the water pump, they get sharp. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. We have three bolts at the top that hold the water pump to the block. The order of removal is not super important. The order of going back together will be very important. So we did our three bolts at the top. We have two bolts down at the bottom that we need to remove. You basically have one bolt on either side of the outlet that sticks out at the bottom. Because our pump is so crusty, it's hard to see the one that is on the left side as we're all looking at it. Remember, you can reference your new pump though if you're not sure exactly where it's at. I had to do some unhappiness to get that bolt out, or loose I should say, from the bottom because of the crust. But now we have all of our bolts loose. We can woggle our pump out. You're gonna get your final sploosh of coolant here. And just give it a, the old wiggle treatment. That, my friends, is our crusty, nasty, nasty pump. You can really see where it was leaking. It looks like right here, maybe? No, because it doesn't leak up. Maybe back behind here is where it was leaking. This is an old style pump. There were some of these cars that had a recall or a ex warranty extension or something to replace these, but I guess it didn't get to all of them. And this is a real early Mark 7. It was made in April of 2014, so. The fact that it's so old, almost 10 years and 100,000 miles, this is the first pump. That's pretty good. Also, while we're down here, don't forget to get your little union piece. Yeah, get that little guy out of there. And then I'm gonna come back and clean all this. Just look at that. Now for the installation, we have the benefit of having an engine sitting right here. So I'm gonna use this to show you all the really important things you need to pay attention to when you're installing your new water pump. Step one is going to be cleaning these alignment dowels right here. They can get crusty over time and it makes it really hard to seat the water pump onto your block. With a little bit of sandpaper, if it's a really high grit, this is like 1200 or something, clean the surface where it mounts. These can get crusty too. You wanna make sure you're not taking metal away. We're only cleaning here. If you have a real stubborn bit, get a scraper and scrape it off. Now it's time to build our assembly. We have to install our water pump onto our thermostat housing. This part is pretty straightforward. You have two alignment dowels that made up with two holes in the pump side. There's only four bolts right now that we're going to install. I like to start them by hand, snug them up evenly, moving across the housing. When you're ready to torque down the bolts for the water pump, the torque spec and the order are very important. The torque spec is nine newton meters, which is about 80 inch pounds. And the order goes like this. One, two, three, and four. The final two bolts we'll put in when we put the cover on, so we're not too worried about those. You can do this when the pump and all that is in the car. I just find it's a little bit easier to do it on the bench. Then if you've never installed one of these pumps before, take your pump and set it on there and be sure that it seats all the way. Then you're gonna take one of the most forgotten parts of this whole job, your little union piece with new seals, put a little dielectric grease on it. Take your union, take your pump, put the union in the pump just like that. Then what a lot of people will do is they'll actually put the belt on the water pump, bring the pump over and join the union into the cooler and then set it onto the block like that. Now, when it comes to tightening the water pump down, the steps are critical. You wanna hold this water pump up against the block and then I usually just snug these up by hand. The order you do for that is not super important. However, the order you do it when you torque these bolts down is going to be important. Your torques spec is nine newton meters, which is roughly 80 inch pounds of torque. Not pound feet of torque, pound inches or inch pounds. Basically, it's not very tight. On certain jobs, you have to break out the big tools. However, sometimes you have to break out the little ones like this water pump. So we're gonna get out our gear wrench, tiny boy torque wrench and barely tighten the bolts. And the order you need to go in is going to be, this one is the first one. This is bolt number two. Bolt number three is the same side on the bottom. Bolt number four is top center. 
And then bolt number five, the final one, is down at the bottom on the driver's side of the car, closest to the water pump. Just like I mentioned on our other engine, I'm gonna spend a couple minutes in really getting this cleaned up. I wanna make sure we get a good sealing surface for our water pump. I also wanna make sure the customer doesn't look up underneath their car and see all this crusty, nasty stuff after us replacing the water pump. So let's do a good job and get this all cleaned up. Next, we'll get our crank pulley tool and use it to counter hold the crank pulley while we loosen the bolt at the back of the balance shaft. Then we can remove the gear and swap out our belt. And there's some really important things you need to pay attention to. First off, the bolt that holds this gear that drives the water pump is a 12 millimeter bolt. Try your best to use a high quality tool because they can round off pretty easily. Two, and probably more important, this is a reverse threaded or counter threaded bolt. That means left Lefty tidy, righty loosey. We're gonna hold our crankshaft with our crankshaft holding tool, and then we're going to take the bolt out at the gear. Next up, let's get our water pump on. First things first, get your union, put a little dielectric on it to luby lube it up. Then we're gonna take our pump, just like we did on the one on the bench, put the union in the pump. Now we don't have to worry about swinging the pump in with the belt, because we have it off, we're putting a new belt on. Now, this is gonna be exactly the same as we did on the other engine. So I'm gonna torque this to nine newton meters. Next up, we're going to put our new belt on. We're gonna reuse the gear, but we have a new bolt. So if you take it and put it on the little stud that the gear goes on and on your water pump drive, you should be able to get that belt on pretty easily. The torque spec for that is 10 newton meters plus 90 degrees. Next, take this little yellow guy off. Watch your fingers when you go back on with your cover. Then put your T30s you took off, one high. These go through the water pump to the thermostat house. Housing. Snug it up, click, okay. It's time to replace that glove after the show. <laughs> and then Ray told me I gotta get a new glove because it ain't doing nothing for me. Next, let's get our coolant hoses hooked back up. The very bottom one we're gonna do from the very bottom because I got that whole hose off of there. Do that one. Make sure you give these a little pull so that they don't come off. Let's work on getting our manifold back in. We're gonna get our little towelie guys out of here. If you did not do your carb cleaning, I still think you should. I'm actually gonna be pulling this manifold right back off for another job, so we're gonna do that as part of the other video, fixing the misfire. We'll put our plates back in. Before you put your manifold on, make sure you install that new gasket. Make sure there's nothing broken or anything on these intake flaps as well. Get your back line routed sort of where it goes. Make sure your connectors are placed where they can go in the retainer. We're gonna just put our manifold on. Our goal here, and the reason I'm doing things in this order, is to get the cooling system sealed up as fast as I possibly can. That way, if we do have a leak, we don't have to take the entire car apart and do the whole job over again. I'm not planning to have a leak, just a little bit of a hedge. Now, I'm gonna lift the car up and work from the bottom, but you could do a lot of this stuff kind of working like this. This space gets a little bit tight, but let's say you wanted to put this triple square bolt on up top, you can get it into that bracket without lifting the car up. It's really up to however you're having to work on the car. Before you tighten this bolt, make sure that the top side is in the manifold. We'll plug in our electrical connector down here at our thermostat. Then we can get our coolant hose on. And that should be our last coolant connection. Next step is to do a pretty thorough visual inspection and make sure that you don't have any coolant lines still disconnected. I don't care about the rest of this stuff right now. We got connectors that aren't plugged in and this manifold is not even tight. This fuel line's doing who knows what. We only care about coolant and here is why. Next, we're gonna get our handy dandy little cooling funnel friend and fill our cooling system. This is the fitting that is for VW and Audi. I'll link this thing up because it's awesome. Pretty much, if you don't have something like this that I'm using here or one of those tools that pulls the cooling system into a vacuum, you're gonna have a nightmare of a time trying to bleed the coolant. And we're gonna leave this on the whole time while we're putting the rest of the car Together. Now there is something else I like to do before I torque down this intake manifold. I like to start the fuel rail on both sides. That makes it less likely you're gonna have to fight the fuel line to get it lined up when you have a little bit of flexibility of the manifold not being completely tight. Now we can come back and torque our manifold down. The torque spec for the intake manifold is another nine newton meter gig and you wanna make sure that you're kind of working diagonally on these. Now we can move to dealing with all 
all of our connectors and everything that we have left over. And this is a point where like really one of the first things you probably wanna do is get that fuel rail tightened up. That'll give you the most amount of room. That includes getting the retainer bracket bolt on that goes into the manifold. Tighten down the line at the pump and tighten it down at the rail. Get all your connectors plugged in. You got a couple that are semi-hidden. Keep this one available to hook into your intake manifold. Don't forget to put that vacuum line back on at the back. We have our map sensor here we need to plug in. Next, we can put our boost pipe on. You may remember our clamp came apart when we took it off, so I put a new clamp on it. Remember when you're putting clamps and stuff back on, try and put it in a position where you can get to it easily if you have to go back. Don't treat it like the factory does and it goes on wherever. We'll go ahead and tighten this 13 here on our bracket as well. Don't forget that little connector right behind the oil filter. That's for the intake flap sensor in case you forget it and got a check engine light. Now we're in a pretty good spot. However, one thing is a problem. You may have noticed I didn't put our fuel line up underneath here, sometimes this kind of stuff happens. It happens to me, it might happen to you. And the reason I'm leaving it in the video is because I wanna point out that in all actuality, this is not that big of a deal. We can disconnect our coolant line here, unplug our map sensor and drop our fuel line on. We can also undo the fuel line at the high pressure fuel pump, back it up and route it back under, which is what I'm gonna do. My main point is don't beat yourself up about little crap like this. It's really not that big of a deal. You still got plenty of riz left to, uh, not be dog water or something. Now we can plug in our throttle body and put your wire retainer back on the intake manifold. Let's resecure that coolant line with our T30s. This is going into plastic, so be real careful here. Do one final check up underneath and make sure you got everything, including tightening on your lower boost pipe if you took that all the way off. Tighten that T30 that holds your boost pipe on. Plug your boost pressure sensor in down at the bottom of your boost pipe. Do a Another good visual inspection before you put that belly pan back on. Next, put your intake back on, whatever flavor you have. Don't forget to put your vac line on. Ours is broken, but that's all right. It'll fit fine. Now, before you snap the intake down, put your front duct in. It's gonna make your life much more easier than if you try and fumble it around. Once you get that duct in, you can go ahead and snap your air box back on like this. Put your two T25s back in the duct. Now you have a choice. You can leave your coolant funnel on and start the car up and let it burble out, or you can put the stopper in the funnel. This is like my favorite part of this funnel. Take it out and put what you didn't use back in your jug. Before we can call our car good, handful more things we gotta take care of. One, start your car up and make sure that you don't have any coolant leaks, fuel leaks, oil leaks, air leaks, anything like that. Also, you wanna roll your heat all the way to hot and just let it blow till you get hot. That's gonna help bleed the air out of the system. The other thing we need to do is jump into the scan tool and program our new thermostat. I'm gonna be using VCDS for this, but you could probably use OBD11 if you'd like. We're gonna go into auto scan, then gateway installation list. You could jump right to ECM if you would prefer. Go into engine, and then in basic settings, we are going to drop this drop down menu Go all the way to the bottom. Engine, temperature, control, actuator. That's the part we're looking to do our adaptation on. Click that, hit go. You'll hear it run a couple of times. Then it will say finished correctly, and that's it. Now I've heard of people not doing this and not really having a problem. If you have the scan tool, which if you're DIYing stuff like this, having an OBD-11, having a VCDS is a must in my opinion. Go ahead and take care of it. It took us 30 seconds at most so it's worth the time and energy. Also worth taking your car on a test drive, keeping an eye on your coolant level, and I always like to check the coolant level the next morning to be sure that an air pocket didn't bubble up and now you got no coolant in your coolant bottle. So there we have it, a two liter water pump. Remember, all Gen 3 and 4 two liter water pumps are basically the same. Just be sure to refer to the repair manual. I will put links to everything you need to do this job yourself down in the description. You can just click it and buy it. And if you ask Paul real nice, he'll definitely come to your house and do this job for you. You also might notice our engine is magically back apart. That is because I'm fixing the thing it actually came in for, which was a broken valve spring. So with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day and I'll talk to you again next time.